Let's count it down in three, two, one. Let's do this. All right, welcome to How Your Culture Can Recover from the Coronavirus. My name is Joe Urbanski, COO and Org Culture Strategist with The Total Solutions Group. I am so glad, so happy, so grateful that you are here. It is a very strange, very different world that we are looking at right now. So we need to start talking about the big word, culture. I'm coming to you from the Total Solutions Group. We provide strategic consulting, results-based training, and dynamic keynotes for large organizations, small organizations, but all real organizations and no illicit organizations. Uh, but our focus is being your partner in driving the results that are really most important in three key areas. That's your culture, clearly, your strategy, and your capability. Right, You've got to have the right culture to push the right strategy along. And in order to make sure you push that strategy along, you have to develop the organizational capability, the team capability, the individual capability. But it all stems from this big idea, this big word, culture, which we're not really talking about enough. So today, I'm your CCO, your Chief Culture Officer. And we're going to focus this session on how your culture can recover from the coronavirus, and yes, I know we are still in the midst of it right now. We are still dealing with it, but the idea is we've settled in, right? We get the picture. We're starting to see it. We're starting to understand it. I shared with my wife and my family on March 14th. That's the day after they shut down the elementary schools. It was Friday the 13th. It literally was Friday the 13th, Friday, March 13th. And so now here we are six, seven, eight months later, We've settled in, we get it. We are trying to figure out everything still, but we understand the situation a lot more than we used to. And I know you might be thinking, oh, another video event. Every conference, everything that I'm doing is turning to, into a video event. But you know what? We're gonna do it differently today. I'm actually going to ask for your physical participation and your engagement. You're gonna connect with me and others in the chat box. Let's make this as conversational as possible. I want you to stand up, I want you to stretch, I want you to get out of your seat, I want you to move around, I want use the noggin. Let's really do this differently, right? If you hate lectures, you're gonna love this. I have three promises for you. We're gonna have some fun, say fun. Go ahead, say it. We're gonna learn some stuff. And lastly, we're gonna feel empowered, right? We gotta start with fun because if you're not having fun, are you gonna learn or remember anything anyway? No, we're not. Then you gotta learn some stuff and that stuff's gonna be very different, very relevant for you. You're gonna hear it in a way that you need to hear it as opposed to anyone else. And lastly, we have to feel empowered. That word empower means to provide power, to give your power away, whether it's knowledge or resources or support or love or caring or listening but to give your power away so that others have the ability to make decisions and take action. That is what we need to do here. Make decisions and take action. So I'm gonna ask for 100% of your commitment. This is not just some sit down session. You can see I am not sitting down. We are ready to roll, but I need to make sure you are ready to roll. We are also doing right now setting culture. That is what we're doing. So I'm gonna ask you to participate fully. Put your stuff down just for a moment and please push your chair out. Please stand up. Go ahead, stand up if you are able. We're gonna do something differently. We're gonna set some culture. And you're gonna see how much of a difference this makes. So you should be on your feet if you are able. I want you to put your hands up all the way up. Stretch to your left, your other left. I can see that. Oh, get a good stretch in there. Stretch to your other side. All right, stretch all the way back. Oh, doesn't that feel good? Didn't you need that? You've been sitting down like all day. All right, shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. Point to yourself. If you talk in your head, that's fine. If you talk out loud, nobody else can hear you. Say, I now commit 100%. All right, say, I will apply what I learn. So I don't waste my time, right? This is important. You've invested time. Your organization has invested money. You're investing your resources. Right, so that you can grow your capability, grow your talent. Say, hey, I'm gonna have a great time. Look at somebody else on the screen, right? Imagine we're in this big giant meeting. I want you to look around and I want you to say, hey, you, you're gonna have a great time too. 
All right, we have to make this commitment to bring our energy, to bring our commitment. We are setting a culture for today, for this session. This is, by the way, a mega session. So if we were in person, if we were live, if we were together, we'd be getting up out of our seats, we'd be high-fiving everybody. And I know we can't be doing that right now, but think about the culture that we create when we bring the best of ourselves, the best of our energy. Part of the manifesto here at the Total Solutions Group is that we believe People can become the best version of themselves at work, and then they have to bring that person home, right? But why do we believe that? Because we invest more time at work than we do at home. Eight hours a day, sometimes 10, sometimes 12. Now, you might not be at work, you'll be at home doing work, or maybe you are in your office. Doesn't matter where you are. You're investing eight to 10 to 12 hours a day doing that work stuff. So you gotta love it. You gotta bring the energy. You gotta bring the passion. You gotta bring out your genius, your brilliance. Because if you don't do that, think of that. Think about that. You get eight hours wrong out of your day. That's a third of your day, a third of your week, a third of your month, a third of your year. That's a 67% on a test if you get 33% wrong. We cannot get 67% of our life wrong when we invest eight hours a day. So bring the energy, bring your playfulness. This session is gonna be different than you expect and it's all about culture. So why don't you clap your own hands, give yourself a high five, grab a seat, let's get started. And in that chat box, if you did participate, I want you to put a yes in there. I wanna know, are you participating? Cause I'm in this session with you. We're doing this together. All right, so drop, drop a word in that chat box, write that word yes if you are fully participated, fully engaging, fully ready to go, because you know there are people in your organization, there are people in this session, heck, and I'm not gonna make any of you wrong, but people who aren't fully committed, not fully committed to the culture. In fact, you might know what the culture is, but not willing to follow through on it. You might not know what the culture is, and you're like, am I supposed to stand up and really do this? Is anyone else doing this? But what I want you to be is a fire starter, a culture starter, right? How can we recover from the coronavirus? How do we recover from COVID-19 and everything that is happening right now? You've gotta be a culture starter. You've gotta be the person that regardless of what anyone or anyone else is doing, you do it because it's the right thing to do. You focus on the culture, you focus on the bigger picture. That's the magic. That's what we've gotta be doing here because COVID-19 sucks. It's just the worst, right? So if you're like, what the hell does COVID-19 stand for? I haven't talked to anybody about this. I have been living under a rock. COVID is Corona Virus Disease from 2019. So we're dealing with it and we're probably gonna be dealing with it well into next year. I made the prediction on March 13th of 2020 that we're gonna be dealing with this for at least a year and a half. So that takes us into about September, October, 2021. So is your culture ready? I don't know, but I do know is this, this awesome quote, make the plan, execute the plan, expect the plan to go off the rails and throw away the plan. Now, this is a quote from a fictional TV character, Captain Cold on the Flash TV show, but isn't this quote so perfect? You make a plan. So you had a plan for 2019 going into 2020, maybe even going into 2021 and a bigger picture. You're starting to execute on that plan in 2020, and then you've got to expect the plan to go off the rails because you don't know what's going to happen. And 2020 has been a doozy. So throw away the plan. But don't stop planning. Dwight D. Eisenhower said the plan is nothing. Planning is everything. Right? So our 34th U.S. president said so many years ago, the plan is nothing. Planning is everything. That's what you're doing. You're planning for your culture. So did you make it? Is your company thriving or just merely surviving during the coronavirus pandemic? Think about that. Put a note in the chat box. I want you to answer these questions, all right? So did you make it? We are not even halfway through this, but we are right in the midst of this. Is your company thriving or surviving? Better question, how did your organizational culture fare in terms of hiring, morale, engagement, retention, leadership, succession planning, or firing. How is your company faring right now as we're six, seven, eight months into this? How has your culture responded? 
You know, we've really had three options. During, we have three options during any crisis, but right now, global pandemic, did you accelerate? Did you innovate? Or did you evaporate? Right? And maybe it's not your company evaporating, but your energy evaporated, your passion evaporated, or we had to let a whole bunch of people go. Right? And so the size of our organization is starting to evaporate. But what's really fascinating right now is there are a lot of companies that are using COVID to accelerate their growth, to develop new capabilities, to become better versions of themselves, right? Because their culture is fit for it. It was meant for it. It is, whether entrepreneurial or not, it is entrepreneurial in nature. You don't have to be a small entrepreneurial organization to be entrepreneurial in nature, right? Because here's the, if you want, if you want a good idea to die, send it to a committee. That committee will kill it, and your idea will never live another day. But in an entrepreneurial organization, you don't need a committee to make a decision. You need to make the right decision, and if you bring the right decision to the key influencers or the leaders of an entrepreneurial, forward-thinking organization, you're going to be able to accelerate. So is, are you accelerating? Are you innovating? Are you using this time to figure out what can we do new, better, and different because the world has changed and it's never going back or evaporating. Again, put your thoughts in the chat box. Let us know what's going on in your world, in your company, what's happening with your department, your organization. Be very specific because we want to know how has your culture changed and how have you used culture to transform the way you do business for good or not for good? Evaporating? Accelerating or innovating? Are you surviving or are you thriving? Go ahead and make those notes in that chat box before we move on. Let's have a conversation. And the conversation I want to have with you is about rethinking, rebuilding, and reinforcing culture. Okay, so we've got to rethink what culture is what it was, what it is, and what it needs to be. We need to rebuild our organizational culture now that COVID has shaken a couple things, and we need to reinforce as we go forward. So what do you need to rethink, rebuild, and reinforce in your organizational culture so that we can all become better versions of ourselves? Because you know it, and I know it. The world is different now, and it ain't going back. So how do you recruit the right people or onboard and train your people or boost overall morale or engage your workforce or expand leadership capability or build a lasting legacy? Start with a culture transformation. You start by looking at culture, the much bigger picture than just saying, what skills do we need to develop in our people? Well, because if you have the wrong culture, it doesn't matter what skills you're, people are gonna complain, oh, we have to learn something new, we're not getting paid for this, right? But if you have the right culture, that's how transformation happens. So I want you to start thinking about the results that your organization, your department, your team, you need. And then what are the capabilities that you need to develop to hit those results? And then what's the experience that you need to build and develop and create in your culture to hit those results? It's all about the results. And you can come up with results in four ways. We call these your four cornerstones. The first, of course, is your marketplace where you play, where you thrive or where you die, right? Without that marketplace, your organization does not exist. So your culture has got to be set up. Your people have got to be set up. The results have to be set up to serve the marketplace. Part two is the customers for who you serve within that marketplace, right? Their voice matters and you need to know it, they need to know that you know it. Then of course you've got your organization, that's who you are, that serve those people, the customers, the members, and who makes up your organization? That's your people, who live it and drive it, serving the marketplace. So you've gotta develop results around these four cornerstones. And it all starts with your culture. See, because culture is at the center of everything that you do and who you're becoming and as you live and breathe and execute day to day and for the long term. So let me take a big breath here. 
culture is your vision, your mission, your values, and how you operate within your standards and the branding so that everybody really gets it. It's the leadership and the management or the infrastructure that hold it all together. It's the people, the performance, the processes that move things every single day as you have your rituals and common language as part of who you are and how you operate to achieve those everyday goals along the big picture to the strategy. <sighs> and that is just your internal culture. It's just inside. If we take a look at your external culture, that's the products, the services, the community, the experience that you're creating for all of your members and your customers and the marketplace. It's the marketing, the sales, and the performance that make it all happen and make it all possible. It's the client impact and the industry influence as you move forward, as you move that needle forward, as you get through 2020 into the next year and years into the future. Okay. But wait, there's more. Now you have your subcultures and you know every organization has its own set of subcultures from the country or countries that you operate in, the country or countries that your people are from, the location or regions that you're operating in, the marketplace or marketplaces that you serve or that you are coming into because of mergers and or acquisitions the customers that you impact and how you let them help influence how you operate, your executive team and organizational leaders, the employees and the beliefs that they bring to the organization and life outside work if there is any in the neighborhoods and homes that your people live in. And we only have this 90 minute session. <laughs> so we only have today, so I want you to start thinking about what's really most important in your culture as we move through and past COVID, any global pandemic, any major issue, any economic collapse, any challenges and transformations that you're going to have. Right? Because you can go onto the internet, you can Google it, you can YouTube it, you can ask your friends in social media, you can Bing it, but nobody really does that. But if you ask the wrong question on the internet, how many wrong questions, I'm sorry, how many wrong answers are you going to get? Like a million and one. So you have to start with the right questions. And I wanna prime your mind right now with three. You don't need to answer them, but we're gonna put the seeds in the ground right now. We're gonna water them later. So the first question is this. What's really driving your organization so that when your people walk in the front door, even virtually, their first thought is not about what tasks they'll be performing, but how they'll generate the results your organization really needs. Again, it comes back to results, capability, experience, not just stuff we need to do. So first question is what's really driving your organization? Planting a seed, here's question number two. What will ensure that your people are taking ownership, not just being active, but ownership to move the organization forward, influencing how your organization gets things done day to day and positively impacting the way others think and behave in your business and industry? What will ensure that your people are taking ownership to say, this is my livelihood. This is my organization. This is where I do my best stuff in order to move the organization forward, right? Where maybe they become the best version of themselves because of the commitment to you. Question number three, seed number three. What's at the core of improving the development and optimization of your people, performance, and processes to guarantee success in the future of your marketplace? What's at the core of improving the development and optimization? of everything that you and your organization stand for and do? I'll give you the easy answer, so let's make this really easy. Big questions, easy answer, culture. The answer needs to be culture. Culture is driving your organization. Culture makes sure people are willing to and have the opportunity to take ownership, and culture is making sure that we overall improve the development and optimization of everything that we do. So. Again, culture is at the center, the center of everything that you do and how you operate. But do you know what your culture is, how it was formed, who's influencing it, and if it's driving your business forward or holding you back? Make a note in the chat box and write a number four, three, two, or one if you know at least one of the questions. At least 
two of them, at least three, or f all four. Do you know what your culture is? If you do, you've got one point. If you don't, if you can't describe it, if you can't define it, if you ask 10 different people in your organization and they all say something different, we probably don't know what our culture is. Do you know how it was formed? Do you know what intention went into it or if it happened by accident? Do you know who's influencing it? And do you know if it's driving your business forward or holding you back? Write down in that chat box, four, three, two, or one, if you have an answer to all four, only three, only two, or only one. And let's see, but I'll tell you, most of the time, the answers are ones and twos. Ones and twos. We might know what our culture is, but we don't know how it got here. We might know how it got here, but we don't know who is influencing it. We might know who's influencing it, but we don't know if it's actually working. See, culture is not just the posters and the pens and the mugs and the t-shirts that everybody has in their offices and their cubicles now at home because you've sent it to them in a box. That's not enough. Culture is so much more. It's a living, breathing, dynamic identity. But because of that, we've got to ask these questions. I'm all about the questions. I'm your chief question officer today too. How often are you thinking and talking about your culture? How often are you building and connecting to your culture? How often are you evaluating and reinforcing your culture? And you know it, you know me by now. The answer needs to be what? All the time. All the time. See, because cultural development, just like organizational development, just like personal development, just like working out, it's like taking a shower. If you only do it once, you're going to stink. <laughs> it's, it's not enough to just shower you know, one time and say, I took my shower this year, I'm good, right? That's not enough. I went to the gym today, I did my running today, I'm good. Hey, we had our organizational culture meeting today, we're done. No, it's like taking a shower, you have to do it consistently, all the time, right? So take more showers, here's my diagnosis for you. Take more showers together. Stay with me, I'm not meaning in a weird, strange way. I just mean have these conversations on a regular basis. The word culture is a big and scary word, but it shouldn't be. It should be something we talk about consistently. Because culture influences, and read these out loud with me, culture influences your job descriptions, your applicant process, recruitment, onboarding, training, morale, meetings, engagement, communication, retention, leadership development, firing, expansion, succession, legacy, return on investment, market perception, customer experience, business model development, new business lines, and mergers and acquisitions. So it influences everything. Everything. So you need to know who will lead, who will influence, and who will manage your cultural transformation. And maybe that's you today because you're in this session. Maybe that's you today because you are deciding, I'm gonna step up, I'm gonna step in. Or maybe it's someone else. I want you to think about who that person needs to be. Who's leading it, who's managing it, who's influencing it. And it could be three different people. It could be three different groups of people. This is where sometimes you need a committee because this is not an idea, this is a project. Your culture is a project. It's something that we're constantly working on. It's also a process. We start working on it and we keep working on it. Right? The job of a leader who sees the long term and the manager who focuses on the short term is working on the business, not just in it, but working on the culture, on the strategy, on the people development, not just in the day to day tasks that help us achieve the results. So whatever kind of company that you represent, big, small, entrepreneurial or not, public, not profit, illegal or not, whatever, your success is largely determined not by your products and services, but by your company culture. Everything is culture. Basically everything in your life is largely determined by culture. So I want you to take a moment right now, think about what culture means to you. What does it mean to you and your organization? We've been priming you the whole beginning of this session. What does culture mean to you? Allow me to share with you what culture means to us, but not so much what it means, but what it needs to be. 
It's a little bit of a run on sentence, so stay with me here. It's a living, breathing, dynamic identity that defines your organization's purpose, direction, and values, empowering your people to take ownership and make decisions to drive forward what your organization really needs. Breaking it down, it's a living, breathing, dynamic identity. Your culture is who you are. It defines your organization's purpose, direction, and values. So the bigger why you do what you do, the direction that you're going, so where you're headed, and then the values in how you operate and what you believe is important. Empowering your people, again, empowering, right? To share your power, giving power away. Empowering your people to take ownership, not just walk in and say, oh, here's my nine to five, let me clock in, right? But to take ownership and make decisions to drive forward what the organization really needs. And they start thinking big picture too. Now, does everyone do this? No. But the ideal situation is if you've even got someone on the manufacturing line and they see something wrong with part of the process, your culture is that they go talk to somebody about it and say, hey, I've got a way that we can improve this and cut some time, cut some costs instead of just doing the job to get it done, right? It's so much bigger than that. And I want to prove to you that culture is at the center of everything that you do. So let's play a little magic game right now. You've got a lot of options in front of you. Culture is only one of them. So don't even touch it. Don't even look at it. Don't even pick culture. What I want you to do right now is pick a blue circle, any blue circle except culture. I want you to focus on something that you believe, hey, this is a big deal on our organization. Maybe even bigger than culture. Maybe it's morale. Maybe it's how we communicate. Maybe it's our recruitment. Maybe it's our expansion. Maybe it's our training, but pick a blue circle. And now from that blue circle, I want you to go left or right to a green circle. So wherever you end up. And now from that green circle, I want you to go up or down to a different blue circle. All right, totally randomizing this. Let's see where this goes. And now Let's go diagonally to a green circle. So you can go up or down, but diagonally to the next green circle. And from there, go left or right to a blue circle. And we end up. Culture. Culture's all of these, <laughs> right? Cool magic trick? Of course. And it's again proof that culture is at the center of everything that we do, right? So let's assess your culture right now. Is your culture experiencing dynamic growth during COVID, during this pandemic? Is it at least moving forward in the right direction? Is it break even? We're not winning, we're not losing, we're doing okay. Is it regressing or is it a total loss? Take a moment in the chat box, think about it right now and write right a number five, four, three, two, or one? Is it experiencing dynamic growth where we know we are moving ahead and we know exactly why we're moving ahead, how we're moving ahead because of the culture that we've developed, the purpose, the mission, the direction, the vision, the values. Our people are taking ownership, moving the organization forward. They're empowered, right? All these pieces. Are we at least moving forward? We have a certain direction and we're making progress. Are we break even? We got people coming in. We got people going out. We got money going in, money going out, eh, we're doing okay. Are we regressing? Things aren't working, we don't know why, or is it a total loss? And we kind of need to start over. Five, four, three, two, or one. Put that in the chat box. Hmm. All right, so here's an idea. Harvard Business Review, I know Harvard, little itty bitty, good for nothing, you never even heard of the institution, right? But Harvard Business Review found that 80% of organizational strategies fail for one reason, lack of clarity, a lack of clarity. So let me, let me kind of demonstrate and share this, how this actually works in the real world. There is a story, it's called Knowing Where to Tap, and it's the idea that there is a ship out at sea, and this was a real story years and years and years ago. I don't know all the details, but I do know this actually happened. Real cruise ship out at sea having a problem in the engine room. So they call the boilermaker, they call the engineer, right, down to the engine room, say, hey, can you help us figure out what our issue is? So they all go down to the engine room, and the boilermaker says, can you give me some time and space? 
I will report back to you. I'll let you know what I think the problem is. And the Boilermaker sits there and listens. And on one side, it sounds amazing like a symphony. Everything seems to be working. And on the other side, so the Boilermaker decides to get a little closer, checks in, gets a couple tools out, gets prepared, but listens again. What is going on? So for about the next five to 10 minutes, the Boilermaker sits and listens and does nothing but listens, seeks first to understand. What do I think the problem is before just going in and, and touching all the valves and changing everything? Approaches one tiny little valve all the way in the back, a little red valve, and tries to make a little adjustment to that red valve, but it note, the Boilermaker notices the valve is stuck. So the Boilermaker gets a little tiny tap hammer out of the bag, taps that, ha taps that hammer, you don't tap the hammer, you tap the valve, you go tink, 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 until it's loose enough to go, Arr! open up the valve ever so slightly, just a 15 degree turn, and all of a sudden, boom, everything works fine. Now you have a surround sound symphony. The Boilermaker goes upstairs, provides the invoice, and says, I am all done, $10,000, done. Signed, the mechanic, right? Code name, the mechanic. And of course, the captain goes, whoa, 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 you said you were gonna report back to us, you were gonna let us know what the problem is, we're gonna figure out how we're gonna fix it, and you're telling me you were down there for 15 minutes and it's $10,000? Break it down for me. So, here we go, total, $10,000. For tapping that red valve, 50 bucks, right? Because that's the hourly rate. 50 bucks in those 15 minutes for knowing where to tap, $9,950. That is the point. This is about knowing where to tap in your organizational culture. So what's your red valve? What's leaking? What's draining? What's evaporating? What needs to be slightly tweaked, slightly adjusted, or just focused on a little bit more? Where do we need to pay attention? What is your red valve? And maybe it's this question, right? Here's the seed we planted. We're gonna answer these in a moment. What's really driving your organization? So that when your people walk in the front door, their first thought is not about what tasks they'll be performing, but how they'll generate the results your organization really needs. Maybe that's part of your red valve. Maybe it's this seed. What will ensure your people are taking ownership to move the organization forward? influencing how your organization gets things done day to day and positively impacting the way others think and behave in your business and industry. Or maybe it's question three, what's at the core of improving the development and optimization of your people, performance, and processes to guarantee success in the future of your marketplace? Take a moment right now. Don't just think it, ink it, put some pen on paper. I will give you a few minutes right now. Yes. Literally take a few minutes right now to answer one of these questions to figure out what's your red valve. Get out your paper, turn to another tab, open up Microsoft Word or whatever the one in, in Macs are and uh, start writing some answers. What's really driving your organization? What will ensure your people are taking ownership and what's at the core of improving the development and optimization of everything that your organization does and exists for? Take a few moments and do that now. If you have any questions, let me know in that chat box. We'll be answering some questions. Let's take the time to figure it out now. The focus of question number one is very big picture, right? What's really driving your organization? What part of the culture is driving the organization? So that when people walk in the front door, their first thought is not about just some tasks or bullet points or the little sticky notes that they have, but it's really about how they'll generate the results the organization really needs, the much bigger picture. They're focused on the results, the capability, and the experience, but which results? 
the four cornerstones of your marketplace, your customers or members, your organization, and your people. And if you don't know what's driving your organization, answer it this way. What must drive your organization? What's the red valve that needs to be adjusted so that your people walk in the front door focused on generating results? If you are focusing on question number two, what will ensure that your people are taking ownership to move the organization forward? You might have an answer or you might be thinking, I don't know, but we need that. We definitely need that. So what parts of your organization, what things must you do? What things must the executives do? The directors, the managers, the supervisors, what needs to come from even higher up with the VPs? If you're a small organization, how are you going to get people to take ownership? Not just be curious about something, not just be interested or involved and not just engaged, but to take ownership for the relationship. See, it was one thing that I got married to my wife and we got her the engagement ring and she gave me my, my little wedding band and they're in the shape of a circle and a circle means forever. So I'm not going to go anywhere. I get all that. It's one thing to be engaged, but it's another to take ownership of the responsibility to manage that, to lead that relationship. So how do you get people to take ownership? Or maybe you're answering question number three. What's at the core of improving the development and the optimization of your people, performance, and processes to guarantee success in the future of your marketplace? What's at the core? How do you make sure on a regular basis, on a daily, a weekly, a monthly, a quarterly, a yearly basis, you are improving the development and optimization of your people. So what are you doing to support them? How about the performance? What are you doing to make sure that everybody continues to get better? They're just not supported, but their results are supported. And what are you doing to ensure the development and optimization of your processes, right? That line worker in the manufacturing plant who says, hey, I have a better way. I have an idea. So wrap up some of your thoughts in there, wrap up some of those Q and A and in about 30 seconds or so, we'll move on. So take as much time as you need in the next 30 seconds to wrap up. All right, now I'd like to take you through the solution as you wrap up those thoughts. There are three parts to this solution. I've already shared with you most of them. We're gonna go through it very strategically. We'll take about 10 minutes to go through each of these. So stretch your body out, shake it out a little bit, get ready, slap yourself in the face, time to wake up. I know you've been thinking big, you've been thinking deep. You're like, wow, that, all this thinking's hurting my brain. Well, now it's time to move into the solution. How do we focus on what's really driving your organization? What will ensure people are taking ownership and what's at the core of improving the development optimization of your people? Step. Number one, understand what your culture was, what it is now, and what it needs to be so that each person, each department, and each office has true clarity to what's really most important, what's working and what's not working. That's your first step. Step two, build your strategic core that fosters aligned accountability in who you are, which is your vision, your mission, your standards, right? The needs you solve, which are critical challenges facing your marketplace and your customers or members, and the value you create, the impact that truly matters both internally and externally. And step three, activate your culture with the right focus, frequency, and follow through to reinforce purposeful execution and day-to-day -day agility. You want to be able to express in culture documents, review it during meetings, and tie it into all planning sessions. So let me break down the solution real quick. Step one is understanding what your culture was, what it is now, and what it needs to be so that you have, see the words in there, true clarity. That's the first part in our TAP model, true clarity, 
T for true. Yeah, because you can have clarity. You can very see, very clearly see in front of you, but if you don't have true clarity, you might realize you're not looking in the right direction. That's what true clarity is all about, and it's about RMI, what's really most important. Step two is about building your strategic core that fosters aligned accountability. Here's the A in the TAP model. And yes, the TAP model directly connects right back to tapping that red valve. So the T is for true clarity, the A is for aligned accountability. And step three, you'll see in there focus frequency and follow through to reinforce purposeful execution. P for purposeful execution. Because there's no way we can get the purposeful execution without having alignment and accountability within our organization. And there's no way to get alignment and accountability without having true clarity. So there's a process within a process for you to digest. Last piece, and you'll, you may have noticed it here, step one, two, and three are about rethinking. That's step one. Rebuilding, step two. And step three is reinforcing. Rethinking, rebuilding, and reinforcing. Let's focus on step one, what your culture was, is, and what it needs to be. So that everyone's got true clarity to what's really most important. Because you got lots of stuff. Everybody got lots of stuff. If you started adding up all of the meetings that you have on a regular basis, whether they're digital meetings on video, or whether they're phone conference meetings, or whether they're meetings in person, you have a lot of meetings. You'll also happen to have a lot of meetings about those meetings, right? The follow-up meetings and the debriefs. Then you have all the emails, and you have everyone CCing everyone else on all the emails, so you have all the email responses too. Now you have all of the phone conversations and your phone appointments, and then you have conversations and appointments about the phone appointments let alone all the other things that you are trying to do on a regular basis, you have a lot of stuff. Let's do some simple and easy math because I know if you add up all your stuff, you have about 4,287 things. Let's just say it's 100. Can we just do some simple math today? So do the math with me. We're gonna start with 100 things. Now I wanna ask you, of all the things that you're doing, what percentage of them are important? How many of the 100 things, so to speak, are important? I know it's not 100% because I know you are doing something that you probably don't need to be doing. It's somebody else's job. It's somebody else's fire you're trying to put out. It's important to them. It's not important to you. What we have found out in all of our research is about 50%. About 50% of the things that you are doing are important. A lot of them are just important to somebody else, right? Which might make them important to you. But if you really think about it, just getting back to some of those emails or acknowledging the email, it's, it's you got to do it but it's not important to do it. So we, let's say we got 50%. Of, that, of those 50 things on that list, what's most important? If you said, oh, this is most important, this is more important than those other things that were important, maybe it's 20% of the 100 things, right? So you've got 20 out of 50 things, 20 out of 100 things that you're doing, that's 20% that are most important. By the way, the Pareto Principle, actually proves all that, right? 80% of your results comes from 20% of your input. So 20% of the things that you do are most important. Roll with me on the math, but that's not enough. You see we have space on the top of this slide for one more item. It is what's really most important. And the answer is there. It's three. Three things that are really... Now, why do we say what's really most important? Because if you were telling me in a story, and my question was, really? you know we're talking about the truth here. What's really most important? What's RMI? That's what we wanna help you focus on for this first step so that you can get true clarity to what your culture was, what it is now, and what it needs to be. How do you find out what's really most important? We're gonna give you our core standards. So these are the Total Solutions Group core standards. Number one, relevant. It first has to be relevant. If it's not relevant, don't waste your time doing it. It is not really most important. See, on that list of 100 things, not all those things are relevant. So you know they can't all be important if they're not relevant. Step two, as you are debating your culture, as you are figuring out your strategy, as you are moving forward, this second core standard is compelling. Yes, it's gotta be relevant, 
then it has to be compelling. It has to be exciting for people to buy into. Because if it is relevant and boring, how far are you going to go with it? So as you rethink your culture, as you focus on what it was, what it is now, but ideally what it needs to be as we move past COVID, what's relevant and what's compelling and what's sustainable as we move forward, right? It's got to be sustainable. Core standard four is replicable. Let's do it again and again and again. Let's do it in the different departments, right? And five is scalable as we grow. We've got to be able to leverage it everywhere else. So breaking each of these down. Relevant is the right work at the right time with the right people, okay? So as you focus on your culture, are all the things that you're doing the right work? Is it the right time? And is it the right people? That's how you know, yes, this is relevant. Okay, great. If it's relevant, you can move on and figure out, is it compelling? See, our core standards, it's a way that we kind of evaluate before we go into our plan of action. So compelling, it's where people feel they must be a part of this. Are they excited about it? Are they interested in it? Are they asking you questions? Yeah, they need to. Because if they're not, maybe those people aren't relevant or maybe the plan or the culture isn't. Are people open? Are people willing? Are people invited to ask questions? That's a question you've got to ask yourselves. Oops. Uh, is it sustainable where people will adopt it for the long run? Or is it just a good idea for right now? This has to work for the long run, for not just for now, but into next year beyond COVID and the year and the year after. Fourth standard, is it replicable where we can reproduce similar results and performance? If not, maybe a better result and performance because of the work that we're doing, right? We got to build the right system. We have a system. You, everything in life is a system, right? You wake up to a certain alarm. You brush your teeth the same way. You get dressed in a very similar way every day. We have, as, as we're driving out on the roads, we have the green light, the yellow light, and the red light. And if you decide, you and just a few other people decide, hey, today, I'm going to break that system. Then it fails completely and everybody else fails. See, people don't fail, systems do. You've got to make sure you set up the system so that they are replicable so you can continue to reproduce those results. And last piece, last standard, number five, is scalable, where we leverage your results throughout the entire organization. So I want you to use these five standards save this slide, take a picture of it. I will send it to you later after an evaluation. But use this to evaluate in advance, do we have the right culture? Is it relevant, compelling, sustainable, replicable, scalable? Because if it is, now we know it will drive our organization. It will drive our people to get excited about the results, not just the tasks, the things that we are doing together to accomplish, not just their little to-do list. It will help them take ownership of the experience. It will help improve your development and optimization of the people, the performance, and processes, right? Those seedlings of questions that we provided earlier. So when it comes back to your red valve, what's really most important in your organization, I want you to think, what are the red valves? What's working? What's not working? And what's the difference? These are three questions we've gotta be asking consistently. What's working, what's not working, and what's the difference? How do you know it's working? Five core standards. Relevant, compelling, sustainable, replicable, scalable. That's how you know it's working. If it's not working, one of those standards is broken. And then what's the difference? You gotta figure out the difference. You gotta be a detective. That's how we rethink culture. All right, so take a minute right now. Make a couple notes for yourself. Forget the chat box just for yourself. What are the red valves? What's really most important? of the 100 things that your culture is made of, of all the meetings and all the, the posters and all the visual aids and all the things, what's the three things that are really most important in your organization? Take a moment and do that now.
and you are wondering what makes it a mega session, it's not just the time frame, it's the mega questions, the mega thinking, the mega processes. It's all mega. So from the solution, we just started focusing on just for 10 minutes what the culture was, what it is now, what it needs to be. Now let's move to the second part, build your strategic core that fosters aligned accountability. Right, so first we have to start with true clarity. True what? Say clarity. Clarity, how do we get that? You gotta make sure you're focusing on what's really most important. How do you get that? Five core standards, relevant, come on, you say it, compelling, sustainable, replicable, and scalable. Then you gotta figure out what's working, what's not working, what's the difference? Five standards. That helps you focus on what's really most important. Now that you have true clarity, to what the culture was, what it is now, what it needs to be. We've got to build the strategic core and rebuild, maybe during this COVID situation or any other crisis situation, rebuild how we're operating. So here's your culture path in a nutshell. Starts with the who, who you are and where you're coming from, what you want to ultimately become and achieve, and how you'll get there in a sustainable way. Again, there's that word sustainable, right? So who, what, and how, this is your culture path. We've taken a lot of organizations through this. We did it with ourselves as well. And it takes about 18 to 24 months. And it starts with your history. That's where we've been and how we got here. You, the key leaders, your directors, managers, VPs, supervisors, key influencers, they should understand a little bit of the history of the organization. If they're not interested, then maybe they're not the right people but at least some base level of how did we get here, right? What are the issues that, that caused us? What were the decisions, the key decisions in our history that made us who we are now? From the history, we need to understand those four cornerstones, right? Market, customers, organization, and people. That's what makes up who we are because we know each of those pieces. And then our manifesto, as I mentioned, our TSG manifesto, it's the reasons and the story behind the why. Ours is because people work eight, 10, 12 hours a day, the, you know, most of their day, most of their, we spend most of our time at work, more time at work than we do at home. Work needs to be, it must be a place where we become the best version of ourselves that drives who we are and ultimately how we operate here at TSG. So that's the first part of the culture path. Do you have it? Do you know your history? Are there documents written down? Is there a video? Is there a story somewhere? Do you know the path through the, core, the four cornerstones? And how about the manifesto? Do you know why deep down the organization exists? Really, do you? I hope so, I really do, right? That's the first part of your culture path. The second part is the what. This is your purpose, a statement of why we are here. So you take your manifesto, it's maybe a page or two pages. It's not a lengthy, it's not a book, right? But it's a little quick story. Here are the reasons why we do what we do. Your purpose is a statement, summing all of that manifesto up into one statement that defines what we are here to do. Then you take your vision, which is what we want to become, combine that with your mission, which is how we follow the vision, and add in your drivers or building blocks and KPIs, key performance indicators of the business. And you're like, oh my gosh, Joe, you're interested in a huge, huge process. Yes, I am, because it's a mega session, all right? So not every organization even understands the difference between vision and mission. They tend to get those two mixed up. Your vision is the direction. It's where you're going. It's where you want to be. It's the kind of people, the kind of organization you want to have. It's the transformation you want to create. Your mission is how you do that every single day, right? In the military, they have a mission. That mission is what they're doing right now. It is a part of the bigger picture. Your mission helps you accomplish things daily. It's how you follow the vision. That's the second part of your culture path. The third part is your how. All right, what are the standards for how we need to operate with agility, flexibility, being able to shift, being able to pivot. I know we hate that word, right? But during these uncertain and unclear and untimely and unprecedented times, I hate these U words. They're all U words, 
right? But really unpredictable. So you have to have agility to work through the unpredictability, right? So start with your standards, then set up some values and behaviors. So you gotta know what's important, ideally what's really most important, and what we expect from our people in our organization and how we operate. And then lastly is the code. I like to call it the code. It's the everyday communications and operations. It's what do we use email for? What do we use phone calls for? Especially now because we're doing things differently, differently than we've ever done. So you can see why this is an 18 month to 24 month process. It'll take you just 18 months to set it up, but then at least six to 12 months to then get it finally formalized and integrated where everyone really gets it. You want to document everything about your culture. That's the only way you can activate consistent usage to move the organization forward. I'll give you a few examples here. So we worked with Mid Florida Credit Union. We are about a year into our partnership right now. And we have an ongoing core working doc, which we use in Google Drive, to share between them, between us, on all the pieces. And you'll notice, you can see some graphics in here, some things that they've put in here, right on that second page of the sheet. You can see it right there is the culture path, right? That is what we're building. That's what we're putting in here, making sure now, yes, they came in with some of these already done and completed. So we didn't have to rethink them, we just have to reinforce them. But some of these pieces needed to be built. So that's where we are a year into the process now. We have a five page document, running document with a lot of edits and it's open because what is culture? A living, breathing, dynamic identity. It changes. So this is our core working doc and once we finalize each, then we have one sheet for each of them. I'll show you the finished product. I've been working with an organization called Collegiate Empowerment since 2004 and you're like, Oh my gosh, that's 16 years or more. Absolutely. We have a client we've been working with for 16 years. They provide seminars, retreats, and conferences for higher education, right? And you can see a lot of the team in there. I am listed as one of the team members, which is pretty cool. I mean, I've been there damn long enough, okay? So we worked with them in their Google Drive system on all the pieces that they wanted people to get during their onboarding of the company, the culture, and the marketplace. And you can see every one of these, it's kind of as we listed, the history, the manifesto, the vision and mission. There's a client value statement, the ethos, which is a fancy Latin word for spirit. There's the code, there's mantras, they're understanding the market. This is making sure we have a culture path to build a cultural identity. And then each and every one of those has its own one page document, one page, and it gets reviewed at quarterly meetings, at team summits, at major trainings, and during the weekly phone calls, they'll pick one sentence to focus on that one sentence. Why? Because this is how you reinforce it. Same thing here at Total Solutions Group. Again, using Google Drive, we have the same pieces, right? We have our what we call our TSG experience. Then there's the history manifesto for Cornerstones, our bio, right? So we want people to understand like a little bit more of our current story. We have the history, which is our past story, and our bio is the current story. There's our value proposition, the purpose, the vision, the, mal the, the I don't know what word I was just gonna say, the purpose, the vision, and the mission, our approach, standards, and model. Then there's a separate document for our standards that we printed and published. Then there's the behaviors, there's our ethos, of course, we use the Latin word, we stole that from Collegiate Empowerment and uh, our communications code. So again, here's your culture path. Break it down, it is a process. I wanna plant this seed, introduce it to you today. You have all of these pieces, take a moment right now to highlight, to circle, to star, which one, which two, which three do you need to start with so that you can move the organization forward, so that you can not only have true clarity, but aligned accountability, where people are aligned to a common core, a common vision, a common mission, where we are all going collectively. You take this culture path and build a culture identity. So take a moment, write down what is that thing? One, two, or three things, right? Only three things can be really most important. So as you're building or rebuilding your culture, what are those three things? Take a moment now.
All right. Part three to the solution. Not only did we focus on what your culture was, what it is now, what it needs to be, so we have true clarity to what's really most important. Part two is building that strategic core or rebuilding it during COVID, during any other crisis, right? Or, or any other just time of change so that we have aligned accountability to all of the important pieces for who you are and where you're going. Part three here is this, activate the culture. Right, so you rethink it, you rebuild it, now you reinforce it, you've gotta activate, you gotta turn it on. We put all these pieces in place, you build your culture path, now you plug it in and turn it on with the right focus, the right frequency, and the right follow through so that we have purposeful execution. So let's do it, starting with a point person. And you said earlier, maybe it's you, maybe it's somebody else. So write their name down again, think about that person. Who is that person? Who are those people? And you want to ask them, how will you, how will we move the organization's culture forward in three ways? The first way is to drive your focus. So the first F word, focus. Where do you, your department, and your organization need to start in terms of the organizational culture and reinforcing it? Not the question I just asked about where do we start to rebuild it, but now to reinforce it. Take 30 seconds. Where do you need to drive your focus? Where do you need to start? Where do you, the team? Maybe there's one department that's just not with it. Maybe there's a certain level of leaders in the organization who aren't getting it. Maybe you have a brand new leader. One of the organizations that we're working with right now got a brand new COO who said, we don't have a culture. And I am sorry, miss, you always have a culture. You just might not know what it is or how it was formed or who's driving it or who's influencing it or if it's working, but there is a culture. There is always a culture. The fact that you don't know there is a culture is your culture. So where did we need to start with them is helping them define what the culture is. And in doing so, we have to touch base with all the different people, all the different groups, all the different departments to reinforce with them, here's what we believe the culture was, what it is, and ideally where it needs to go. And then they help us build it collectively. All right, so that's the first F word. We got three of them. Drive your focus. The second one is drive your frequency. Now you wanna look at a plan for 12 months, 90 days, 30 days, and now. What needs to get done? What do you want accomplished? What do you want your culture to be like a year from now? With total reinforcement, total purposeful execution, what's different a year from now? So it is going to be October, or if you're watching this in November, December, a year from today, at the end of 2021. Or if you're watching this again, 2022 or whenever it is, what's the organizational culture need to be how does it need to be reinforced on a regular basis? And in order to get to 12 months, what needs to happen every 90 days? In order to get to those 90 days, what, it, what needs to happen every month? And what needs to happen here and now? Take a moment, think about that. Write that down. Write some notes for yourself. Write down some questions you need to ask your people in your organization. Okay, now we have to drive your last F word, follow through. To drive your follow through, you've heard this phrase, maybe, maybe not, who does what by when? Who does what by when in terms of reinforcing with purposeful execution the culture path that you've been driving, understanding how we're gonna get our people to take ownership, understanding how we're gonna make sure that we get this throughout the entire organization, who does what by when? Make a note, make a list, make some check boxes. Who is gonna be involved in this process, in this experience to follow through? What does that person need to do? And by when do they need to do it? Wow, you have quite the mega experience here today. I am overwhelmed just talking about it. 
just let alone thinking about it. We are cramming in what we do in six months into a 90 minute session. So be patient, be patient with yourself. Give yourself some grace, take a breath. This is a lot, maybe take another breath. But if you watch this again, or if you go through all of your notes, you'll realize, holy crap moly, we have quite the system. We just have to start with step one. That is how our culture recovers from the coronavirus, or again, any major transformation as we move forward. That culture solution is this. Step one, understand what your culture was, what it is now during COVID, right? So before, before COVID, during COVID, and what it needs to be as we continue through and beyond COVID. COVID, it's just a, it's just a flu. It's a flu that we do not have a, a vaccine for or a cure for. It's a brand new flu. So it's scary. It's dangerous. But we're going to have this forever. It's not going away. It, just like the regular flu. It doesn't go. It's just a different strand, a very different strand of the flu. It's not going anywhere. So we got to work with it. So what does your culture need to be as we continue to push through? I know for sure digital delivery, events like this, this is gonna be more frequent. Those Zoom calls and those WebEx calls that you're having, those are gonna be more free, you're gonna do those. I don't have phone calls with people anymore because they just say, hey, would you like to do a Zoom? Listen, I've been using Zoom since 2013. This is the first time people are asking me to Zoom, okay? The world is different, the world is changing. So you gotta understand what it was, what it is now, what it needs to be to get true clarity to what's really most important. Not the stuff, not the 4,287 things. I think that's the number I said before. Not the 50% of them that are important, not the 20% of them that are most important, but the 3%, the three things out of 100 that are really most important. And you use the core standards to figure that out. Step two, build your strategic core that fosters aligned accountability in who you are, right? Your vision, mission, standards, the needs you solve, the critical challenges facing your marketplace, the, one of the four cornerstones, right? Your marketplace, customers is number two, then your organization and people are three and four. And the value that you create, which is the impact that truly matters both internally and externally. And then... Step three for the culture solution is activating it, right? So we wanna not only rethink it, rebuild it, but you've got to reinforce it, make it work with the right focus, frequency, and follow through. Your new three favorite F words. Purposeful execution is what happens on the end of that. You have to start with the right focus, frequency, and follow through. And the way to reinforce it is to express it in culture documents that yes, can go up on the walls, but they need to be a part of the everyday conversation. If I'm not using the two words, the two, the first two core standards here at TSG of relevant and compelling, if not, if I did not use those words today, I'm probably not working. That's how frequently I use them. And I used to say that up until about five or six months ago, because now I'm using those words at home. So it's constant, it's everywhere. And that's okay, because we live it, we breathe it. There's no fine line between work and home, especially now when people are working at home. It's all the same. It's all the same, because if something happens terribly at home, you're gonna bring that, that issue, you're gonna bring that, that, that challenge, you're gonna bring that feeling to work. And the people who you work with will know. So here's what culture needs to be. A living, breathing, dynamic identity that defines your organization's purpose, direction, and values. Empowering your people to take what? Say ownership and make decisions to drive forward what your organization really needs. So culture, hear that? Culture is everything. Your company culture must be your guide. You know the, you know the phrase, we're gonna change the phrase. It's the culture, stupid. It's the culture. How do I know that? Well, I want you to start using culture as your lens, right? If you put on a pair of pink sunglasses, how would you see the world? Everything would be tinted pink. If you put on a pair of green sunglasses, how would you see the world? Everything would be tinted green. If you put on a pair of magnifying glasses, how would you see the world? 
everything is bigger, everything is enlarged, everything is closer. If you put on a pair of broken glasses, how would you see the world? Everything's not broken, just the glasses are. That's a trick question. But I want you to use culture as your lens. So here's the first question. What does this say about our culture? Again, it's just, I'm the chief question officer as your chief culture officer. What does this say about our culture? If something's working, I want you to ask, what does this say about our culture? Is it relevant, compelling, sustainable, replicable, scalable, right? If something's not working, what does this say about our culture? If you were not able to recover from the coronavirus yet, if you're still dealing with issues, if your first solution was to fire people, what does this say about our culture? If you are accelerating because of COVID, it has forced your hand and made you do things that you weren't prepared to do yet because you found out what's really most important as opposed to some of the other things and projects that you were working on. Well, what does that say about our culture? Right? Ask this question in good and bad times. The second question is much more personal and you might not want to ask it, but I encourage you to ask, what does this say about my leadership? Because your leadership also drives the culture. When something works, when something doesn't work, what does it say about my leadership? When your people hate that they're getting fired or let go, what does it say about my leadership and the way that I did that and the culture that I built? Or maybe your people understand and they go willingly and they say, I'm really sorry, I know the organization's taking a hit. Now, nobody wants to get fired, but there are different ways of receiving it. You want to build the culture. Your people solutions work only as well as your culture does. Whether you're coming in from HR or training or you're the VP, build the culture. All right, I promised three things before we started. Have fun, learn stuff, and feel empowered so that you can do something with it. So did you have some fun? I know I did. This is great. Just staring at a little dot on my computer screen. <laughs> did you learn something that you can use? Probably way too many things. You're probably a little overwhelmed or overloaded right now, and I get that. That's why I'm going to share with you after an evaluation, I'm gonna share with you the slides. I'm going to share with you some follow-ups. We're gonna make sure that you can watch this again and again and again, all right? Lastly, so that you feel how empowered to take your power, give it away, make decisions, take action. Now, would you like this session to be longer? Don't you wish we had a little bit more time? Because I do. <laughs> There's so much to cover here. And again, overwhelmed, overloaded, take a breath. <sighs> Figure out where do you start, right? Just like Martin Luther King Jr., right? People would ask him over and over again, you know, tell me about this dream, tell me about this dream. It's a massive dream, it's a massive undertaking. But he did not just magically stand in front of 10,000 people. He started by telling one person. So how do you get started? Start with one idea, one person one action. Now imagine if your whole team was here. Imagine if all the other folks in HR or all the executives or all your directors were here. What would the conversation be like? I'm curious, make a note in that chat box. What conversation would we be having? What conversation would you be having if your entire team was here? And that's how you'll know where to start. Take a moment, make a note. What if your whole team was here? What would we be talking about right now? Would they be arguing with you? Would they be saying, oh, this is way too much? If they are, ask, what does this say about our, our culture? What does this say about our leadership? All right. If they're all excited about it and they're all saying, wow, we definitely do not have true clarity to what our culture was or what it is now. All these questions that Joe's been asking, probably a hundred questions just in the last hour. All these questions. Do we know what our culture is, how it was formed, if it's, uh, if it's who's influencing it, and if it's working or if it's not working, if it's driving us forward or holding us back? We don't have answers to these questions. We need to get answers. Well, what does that say about our culture? That we are open-minded, that we are willing, that we are ready to accelerate, ready to innovate, not 
evaporate. Take a couple moments, write down some of your final thoughts. What would your entire team be saying and talking about if they were here right now? Now I promised some follow-up value in the in form of video and or audio that you get the slide summary, you get some additional insights. I will send over the course of the next few months at least four follow-ups so that we can take this really big conversation and reinforce it and follow through on it. So I'm gonna ask you to go to www, no, nope, it doesn't even need to be that, just tinyurl.com slash TSG results. So you'll see it highlighted on the screen right there, tinyurl.com slash TSG for Total Solutions Group, TSG results, because that's how we operate. And that is our website, by the way, tsgresults.com. But tinyurl.com slash TSG results. We're gonna ask for a quick evaluation on our end. There is also another evaluation for you for the conference. But just on our end, what did you pick up today? What was important? What was really most important? How can we help you reinforce it? And how, we ca how can we support maybe being your partner? We need to know this because as we continue to build sessions like this and experiences like this, we wanna know, is it working? What's working, what's not working, and what's the difference? So that we can make sure that it's relevant, compelling, sustainable, rep okay, I'll stop. <laughs> Go to tinyurl.com slash TSG results dot. Nope, no dots, that's it. tinyurl.com slash TSG results. Take a moment, it takes about two minutes to do the evaluation. Do that now, please, and thank you. One more time, you see it on the screen, tinyurl.com slash TSG results. And with that, your name, your position, your company, so we know who we're talking to. If you wanna put your phone number in there, we can give you a call to support you, to follow up, but we'll drop an email to you um, probably over the course of the week, and then maybe two weeks after that, maybe three or four weeks after that, maybe a month after that, so that you have some consistent follow-up and follow-through We'll give you the slide summaries. We'll get you some additional insights. If there are questions that come up in the community, if there are questions that you email back to me, I will make sure that we respond to everybody in this community here. So take a moment, tinyurl.com slash TSG results. Wrap that up over the next minute or so, and then we'll start wrapping up the session. You are awesome for still being here during this mega session. Glad you're here. Make sure to put your email in there. Make sure to double check it. You have no idea how many times I have had to double check people's own email addresses. That's the only way you're gonna get it. So don't be mad at me if you don't get this follow up over the next week. It is going to be because your email address is incorrect. If you're a .org, don't put .com. We have seen it so many times. .govs become .coms. I don't know how, I know people are in a rush doing it. Don't be in a rush. Make sure you get that right. That's the most important piece. That's how we get the follow-ups for you. That's how you get the slide summary. So then you can share it with your team, you can share it with your supervisors and all the managers, directors, and above. That's the only way we know how we can support you. So get that stuff right. Wrap up that evaluation over the next 30 seconds. And we will wrap up this session over the next two minutes. If there are any questions that you have after the evaluation, continue to put those in the chat. Put those in the comments and we will answer those for you. Again, love that you are here. This is such an important topic. You know it, culture is at the center of everything that we do, even in your family. And that's a whole nother session that we could be doing, but we're not doing that right now. But yes, culture in your family, in your organization, in your significant other relationship, the culture you've built with your children, if you have any. I know some of you are like, no children, never children. Uh-uh-uh, stay away from children. That's part of the culture. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 
So as we wrap up here, I wanna give you a COVID-20 plan of action. You're like, I thought it was COVID-19. Yes, but we are in 2020 and 2021 and beyond, right? So here's a COVID-20 plan of action. COVID also stands for this. C is the culture, that's the foundation. If you do not build the foundation of a house right, what happens to the house? It crushes, it tumbles, it crumbles, it falls down, falls apart. You've got to have the right culture in your organization or nothing else works. Retoot, re retoot, that's not a word. Recruitment, retention, engagement, hiring, firing, succession planning, mergers and acquisitions, all of it. It starts with the C, which is what? Culture. Oh, obstacles equal opportunities. That's right, obstacles equal, equal opportunities. Here's how I know that. You experience crap on a regular basis. You have your own phrase for saying it and what it is and what it might mean to you. However, when a farmer sees crap on their field, i.e. manure, they don't look at it as crap. They say, this is great. It's fertilizer. It's gonna help their crops grow bigger, stronger, and healthier. It's gonna make their field even more better. <laughs> All right, I didn't plan that sentence out in my head. So obstacles are opportunities. So COVID, it could be seen as an obstacle, and that's part of your culture, the way your culture sees it, or it could be an opportunity. How do we use this to accelerate and or innovate, not evaporate? C, culture, O, obstacles, V, vision for the next four years. That's right, I want you thinking bigger, not just the next, what are the next three months, how are we gonna get through COVID, but the next four years, why? High school's four years, college is supposed to be a four years. We elect a president every four years. The Olympics are every four years. The World Cup is every four years. The leap year is every four years. So let's operate the way we should operate. What's your vision, the bigger picture for the next four years to get people excited about it so that it is relevant, compelling, sustainable, replicable, and scalable? I is insights for action. Make sure anytime you have a brilliant idea, a great idea, you hear something great, turn it into a goal and then turn it into an action. It's one thing to say, oh, I got an insight. I am not looking as good as I did last year. Well, that's an insight. You realize something about yourself. All right, let me turn it into a goal. I am going to start working out soon and eating right. That's great, but now you gotta turn it into an action. What's an action? How do you make the goal an action? Timeline. When do you work out? And then go do it. So you got C-O-V-I-D. Decisions. See, decisions is a, a tough thing. The word decision to decide means to cut off all the other possibilities. So you have three decisions you can make, a yes, a maybe, or a no. Yes is reward you when you get a yes for something, right? Everyone loves hearing the word yes. We hate hearing the word no. So yeses reward us. Noes stop us. They hold us back. They teach us lessons. But maybes, <laughs> they're murderers. The maybes are murderers. Would you like to go out with me sometime? Maybe. What does that mean? Hey, is our culture working? Maybe. What does that mean? You gotta make decisions. Is your culture working? Is it not working? What's the plan to move forward? Make a decision, take some action, and go forward with this tw COVID-20 plan of action. Again, so grateful that you are here. My name is Joe Urbanski, the bald guy with the Total Solutions Group. We offer strategic consulting, results-based training, and energizing keynotes. You've got my email and my both my LinkedIn and my Twitter profiles right there. It's just Joe Urbanski. I'm an easy find. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. We do have one more thing that we ask you to do because your opinion is important to this conference as well. Please complete the session's evaluation when you receive the survey request. That'll be awesome. So not only did you do hours for TSG, but you've got one for GSC. So glad to be doing this and having this really most important conversation with you today.